Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Zebu Nation Plays Endless Space 2. That's not the regular introduction, but I'm changing it up just because uh, I couldn't remember what I was going to say. But anyway, we're rolling right on exactly where we left off last episode, within the microsecond. And uh, we just started a new turn. There's all kind of stuff going on, including this... Battle over here at Pixis. So we've got an interesting choice. We have a six ship fleet. They have a four ship fleet, but they have two decidedly, uh, in, uh, decidedly better ships, decidedly superior ships in these butchers. Um, their slicers are the same sort of slicers as ever, but they're a little bit improved. They're still short range only, but they now do a lot more damage. 103 damage. So basically, they're the same ships with improved pulse lasers, I would assume. That's why they're Slicer 11s. Uh, we have two defenders, two pioneers, and a gunship and a corvette. Uh, the gunship 7, though, and corvette 7, they do... A lot of damage. But do we want to throw them up against this fleet? Which will most like It'll most likely end in a draw. But it'll be kind of a... Uh, kind of a fearic victory, I'm sure, at best. But, you know, if we retreat, we lose 60% of our health anyway. So, in for a dime, in for a dollar. Uh, well, I guess we'll go... Well, we'll definitely watch this fight. Let's go to advanced. Um, we do have two flotillas to their one at the moment. They might split up into two flotillas. They've got enough points to split up into two flotillas if they want. All right. So our defenders are better at medium and short. So we'll put them over here on the defensive side. Pioneers, I mean, I don't particularly care what they do, but they've got medium range. I guess we'll leave the Corvettes here in the middle at long range. Corvette and the gunship. That seems sensible. Maybe we could put uh, one Pioneer yeah, we can take our damaged Pioneer and bring them over here as well. So we got two flotillas of three ships versus their one flotilla of five ships, which will probably split up at some point. But anyway, they're turtling, which means they're going to be coming straight at us. We're barraging fire, so we're turning away from their turtles. All right, so let's see what we can see here and do what we can do. Okay, they put both of their big ships over here, which is good. So we should be able to destroy these these two slicers, I think, if we target them. We'll see. Battle at Pixis. Here they come warping in with their medium-sized ships. Here we are locking down our armor, extending our gun turrets. Let's go, boys. Let's do some damage. Shields up. Firing away. Looks like we're targeting their larger ships. There's some damage taking out those uh, slicers. Slicers are not returning fire because they're at too far a range. They are definitely poor. Pouring fire down our, de our defender. Poor defender is getting wrecked with fire. Look at that. Just DPS is tremendous. There goes one of their slicers destroyed. How are our defenders looking here? That one's full. That one's down to half. How's everybody else doing here? Full. There goes another one of their slicers. So that slicer force in the middle was destroyed just as I predicted. Now we're going to start pecking away at their bigger ships. And this is where things might get dicey. You can hear us, hear our shots clanging off their heavy armor. 
Or medium armor, I guess, in this case. Doesn't look like they have any force shields. So our Gyalfire laser should be doing significant damage. I can't believe the defender is still alive. 500 hit points left. They're just pouring fire down upon him. There he goes. He's done his job. He went out valiantly. Took a lot of fire. And we have a secondary defender that they're going to start targeting now. I'm sure. Oh, yes! There goes one of their butchers. Huge victory for us right now. This is massive. Again, our long-range advantage is taking its toll on these boys. The fact that they don't have... They don't have much in the way of energy defense either, so our laser turrets did very well. They're calling that a minor victory, but I'm going to call that a major victory. Um, we lost one defender. Nobody else took much of it, any damage. They lost a butcher and two slicers, and their other ships were significantly damaged. So that's... I think we've got a technological advantage over these guys. You know, they've got more ships and bigger ships, but that was a huge victory. We've got the technological and tactical advantage over these fellas. So that's good for us. And we've got a second battle here of all slicers. They've sent a huge slicer force at us. Um, yeah, this is not good. Uh, but... You know, they still have the tactical problem of uh, of all short range. It's a 100% short range force. So they're going to take a lot of damage, but I think they've got enough numbers here that they're going to get in close and they're going to do a lot of damage to us. So let's go advanced. I wish, I wish everybody would turtle up or, or everybody would go to long range, but I don't think we can do that. Um... Maybe we can. Maybe we can put everybody at long range. Defender, get over here. Yeah, we can put everybody at long range. All right, so let's do that. We'll we'll throw them a curveball. I don't know. They're I don't know what they're gonna do, but we're gonna put everybody at long range and uh, just peck away. There we go. Got our. Five ship flotilla in the center, and uh, I guess we'll just sort of say this is like a feint. You know, we're pretending to send some ships short range, and that caused them to split their fleet up. They now have five guys over here at medium range, so those guys are buggered. Those, those guys will never get in range to shoot at us. So we're essentially taking on these four ships right here, and uh, these are the guys we need to focus on. Hopefully we do that. So that is, uh, that's a tremendous tactical victory already. There's their fleets warping in. That's kind of a cool screenshot. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but that was really weird stuttering effect going on right there. Here we go. Turrets being deployed. Still have that in the background. That's a cool screenshot. I wish I could I wish I could take a screenshot of that. It's like it's doing that thing again where I can hear the noises of the battle going on, but I can't really see the battle taking place. Uh, I can see the ships moving through. All the background looks like a I mean, it looks cool. It looks like a warped painting, but uh Let's see if I can pause the battle and take a screenshot at at a proper time. I mean, that's a pretty cool screenshot right there. But the ships just went away. So I'll undo that pause. Yeah, it's, it's acting really weird. All right, there we go. We're back in the action now. We're back in the action. Uh, I, I got full motion video has returned. I just had to pause it, I guess, and let it catch up. They've got some heavy cannons shooting now from some of their ships. I don't like that. 
They're going after our defender. Defender's taken quite a bit of damage. He's down to 1,100. There goes... They've already lost three slicers that we missed in the previous battle. So yeah, they do have a slicer with some... Oh, they do have some medium and long range ships. Okay, they've upgraded their slicer. Slicer fives. There goes our defender. So they've got slicer fives that have some medium and long range abilities. They've got three of those guys. So they're not quite as uh, in impotent as I thought they were going to be. So this is a bit more of a battle than it turned out to be. We lost our defender. Um, there goes our pioneer ship. So we're down three ships versus four. And if these Slicer 11s get into range, we're going to be in real trouble. But there we go. We got another minor victory out of that one. So that, that fleet did good work right there. Took on two enemy fleets. You know, so having these defenders in your fleet, you might think, what's the point? They're, they don't do a lot of damage. They, they only got one weapon, and they're kind of garbage. But they do what they're designed to do, which is take enemy fire, and that's definitely what they did. It left our our corvette and our gunships free to you know destroy four of their ships. So that was very, very good. Now they're continuing to attack. They are just barraging us as we'll barrage them. So this is a third fleet we're going up against, I think. Battle about to start. Another fleet with two butchers and three slicer 11s. I don't know if that's true, but we'll... Uh, I guess we'll keep fighting these battles for as long as we have to. Let's go to advanced tactics... Uh, we don't have enough ships for another flotilla. So yeah, this is a third fleet course um, charging in to Pixus. So they're probably going to finish off our Valiant fleet with this. But you know, it did its job. It defended Pixus. End. We don't have a defender left in the fleet to take the f damage. So these two butchers should be able to finish us off. But hopefully we, we do some damage and take them out. So here we are. Three ships versus their armada. Blasting away. There's the Corvette sending missiles forward. I've already destroyed one of their slicers. No, we're just doing heavy damage to one of their slicers. They're doing heavy damage to our Pioneer ship, which is, I guess, fine in this case. There goes our Pioneer. There goes one of their slicers. That's a fair trade. We might be able to take out two of their slicers before they finish us off. I don't know. We'll see. They're now focusing fire. Gunship has taken some damage. Corvette has taken minimal damage. There goes their second slicer destroyed. Yeah, they're focusing fire on the gunship now. It's going to be... Gonna be doomed for the gunship. I don't think the Corvette's gonna last this battle either, but we're doing lots of damage. That's good. These Butchers are not uh, the greatest ships in the world, but they are... Uh, they are gonna pose a problem to us tactically, because they, they even up the tactics a little bit. This Butcher's taking pretty good damage. Our Corvette is uh, holding its own against the larger ship. But I think we've now moved into short range, so our missile launcher has stopped firing. Our 
Right? Why is our missile launcher stopped firing? Hmm. I don't know. Is that the end? Oh, minor defeat. So we survived the battle with one ship left. Our corvette nearly destroyed. But we still hold the system after all of that. Very, very good. They still have 13 ships left. Butcher and two... Butcher, a slicer, and a marauder. It's another 100% short-range ship. It's a protector, though. Okay, so they've gotten onto the protector train. All right, good for them. And then the first devouring horde has a butcher and a slicer each at half strength. So those aren't going to do too much. Seventh Slaying Horde. So they're going to need to rearrange their ships after taking all that damage. We uh, Our one fleet did a number on four of their fleets. So that's something to be proud of. But in the meantime, I think we shall beat a retreat back to Circini. And I don't know if... Uh, I don't know what this defender is going to do except... Ground battle it. Oh, so we... Oh, those ships are really sneaky. Um, they now have 60 troops and 20 tanks. This is not going to be much of a battle. I'm not going to watch it, but I'm going to fight it anyway. Fight to the last straw over Pixis. And we've lost Pixis. I'm pretty sure. Ground battle has ended, yep. Yeah. They lost some troops, but not much of a fight. Alright, alright. So we'll see if that defender can, uh, can get out of there alive. Let's move our ships now, after all of that. Alright, how are we doing down here in Gemini? The Guardian... Whoa, no, I do not want to cancel that. Guardian is two turns away. Or we could spend 376 influence to get it next turn. Might not be the worst idea in the world. Um, <clears throat> We're now making money now. We got 28 dust per turn we're now making soldiers 48 per turn so that's all good news we'll have a chain gang coming up shortly grab some more of these gemini soldiers um will one turn really make a difference i don't think so we'll save that influence for something else that might be a little bit more important let's see go through the systems here so we got electromagnetic shielding coming up. And then we've got a series of ships, which would be helpful. Um, do we want to chain gang anybody for Mira? No. I don't think so. I don't know. We do only have 114 manpower, so we might need to do that. Add the chain gang uh, right before we start building the ship. So we'll get our manpower up. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. What do we got here? Imperials have left Thea. So we got more room to grow on Thea. All right, that's good. Close that down. What do we got here now? Stock park. Stock park it. Stock market-wide price increase. Sudden rise in galactic infil... Okay, let's read the words. Again, I, I get ahead of myself. I, I start making up words instead of reading them. A sudden rise in galactic inflation has led to a market-wide price increase. So now might be a good time to sell some more uh, resources. Marketplace. So what are we getting for deciduous trees now? We're getting 101. 
dust per tree. So if we sell 34, we'll get 3.2 thousand. I think we'll do that. We'll sell. Sell 14 of these. Now we're getting 62. So this is a good time to, s to sell our luxuries, honestly. There we go. All right, that's all we need to sell. That's enough. That's more than enough. See, titanium. Um, You know what? Oh, there's no Edmantian on the market. We could use a little bit more antimatter, but now is a bad time to buy. So let's not buy. That would be dumb. How are we looking at heroes? Uh, it'd be nice to buy some more heroes, but their prices have just gone up and up and up. Now, Degirit, De Norn Degirit. This is a guy, He, uh, I think he's, when we first looked at him, he cost like 1200 And now he costs 4.5k. Ships, we could 3.8 thousand... I mean, we could afford all of this stuff, but do we want to buy any of this stuff? Um, 3.8 thousand. That would be a little over half of our dust right now to buy one of these ships. Would it be better to buy a ship or a hero? So we could buy this guy for three. Ecologist level two. He could be another governor. We got a sh we got several systems that don't have governors. That might not be a terrible investment, even though, like I said, now is a bad time to buy. Um, because see, you can see the red arrow. His price has gone up. Um. Although it seems like prices always go up. we got 2.7% inflation going on. Uh, this guy, he's an ecologist party. That won't have much of an effect on our empire. But the more, you know, the more overseers we have, the, the better. Take a look at this guy. Take a look at his skills available. Um, so he's got the generic skills as fine he's got uh, what skills are these counselor skills so we know we've had counselors before plus five uh, per sterile and plus five on system so that you can put him we got a few systems that have sterile planets we could put him in one of those and then what's his other um, this branch contains the skills from the you social minor civilization i'm not familiar with this minor civilization hardened carapace plus 30 hull damage and hive mind plus one approval per population hmm interesting interesting yeah uh, this is a weird dude he's like some sort of creature do i really want this Amoeba governing one of my systems. I don't know. But maybe I do. Um, it's less than half our dust. For this guy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, I've done it. Alright. It may have been a bad idea. But that's okay. Look at this weird eyeball creature thing. I don't. I don't know if I... I don't know if I really enjoy that, but um, let's add person of means as his skill. Apply that. And let's find a system with sterile planets on it. And assign him there. Um, let's see. Is there anybody who's unhappy? No, we got lots of happy, happy, happy little colonists here. Um... Gemini, Ocean Baron, 
So we could put them on Gemini. They've got one sterile planet. Dobrynia. Oh, Dobrynia has three sterile planets. All right, so that's where you're going, my man. Oops. Apparently not. Um, where did he go? Hero management. Sign to system. Dobrynia. All right. There we go. So that should boost up Dobrynia's production and um, and help the empire greatly. All right, he better for three thousand. Let's see, for three thousand bucks, he's gonna add. He's gonna add uh, 9, 10, 15, He's probably gonna add twenty dust per turn to that system. So he. He'll make up for that 3,000 dust in, you know, a while. <laughs> However many turns that is. Alright, I don't want to do the math right now in my depleted brain. Sleep-deprived brain. Alright, so the war uh, kicked off pretty big last couple of turns. And right now we're on a bit of a reprieve. We're regaining our strength up here in Sable. We've got to rebuild a fleet over here in Circini. Two turns, we'll have this system ready to go. Um, we've got a good look at Spisa here, and Spisa has no fleets. So we're going to invade from Gemini over to Spisa and, and start taking the fight back to them. So let's end the turn. Achievement unlocked getting schooled. I don't know what that is, but we'll take a look at that at some point. Maybe it's because We're so far behind everyone else in terms of point value. We're at 598 um, We're beating one unknown Empire We're just behind the Horatio and another unknown Empire and then the Zeta the Doria and even the Cravers for Leap, Leaper. Leper? Is that Leaper? I don't know. Leper, I guess. Uh, no, that's Leaper. He uh, He's beating everyone at 1,400 points. So nearly three times our points. That's no good. And we're in a war with that guy. So hopefully we can bust him down a few levels. Some Imperials left Mira. Where they went, I don't know. But they left nonetheless. Maybe they went to go colonize somewhere else. We'll see about that. Hey, Dimitri Lenko. Haven't seen him in a while, but he's upgraded himself. Uh, he can, he's can. he got his level 2 stats going on. More science, more production. Let's go with production. Alrighty, alrighty. That's good. He's now level 10, so good man, Dimitri. Alright, production... Mira had now built an electromagnetic shield. Uh, better control of varying magnetic flux densities within nanosecond order time scales means that planetary structures can enjoy more robust defense beneath protective fields. Additionally, when not under attack, these shields shelter troops from any harmful ambient radiation. So it's a new planetary upgrade we've... Uh, built on Mira plus 250 defense capacity minus 20% probability to, to kill population minus 20% probability to destroy improvements upkeep of four dust per turn uh, plus 32 influence nice um, we're now only making two dust per turn Minus 75 manpower already. Uh, we built big data shipyards at Dobrynia. Yersh has added Xeno Industrial. We've got a chain gang program coming up, which we're desperately, desperately in need of. Um, we're sending all of our troops 
into space and all of our citizens are becoming troops. We are becoming a militarized society here. Whoops. Uh, let's see. What are we looking at here? Anything happening? Not so much. Let's move our fleets. Alright, so their fleets have moved out of Pixis. I don't know where they went, but they came, they saw, and they left. So we'll, uh, worry about that. These Doria, they've, they've parked over here on this nebula for some reason. Not sure what that's all about. But we'll let them sit there for now. Um, yeah, that's not much happening on that turn there. So I guess we'll just, just end the turn and go keep, keep the turns rolling. Still got uh, quite a bit of time left on the clock for this episode. So no problems there. I just heard, just heard the beep of some sort of event happening. System colonized on Sable. Hey, it's about time we finally kept them free. Oh, cooperative quest started. Preserve the academy. The academies and the heroes who refine their skills there can turn the tides of battles. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, sorry about that. I had to adjust some stuff here. Uh, the academy and the heroes who refine their skills there can turn the tide of battles and vastly enrich systems. It's not surprising, therefore, that all civilizations in this galaxy secretly desire insight into and control over that powerful establishment. There are also, however, some peoples for whom the academy is an insult and an abomination chief among these are the hardline conservatives of the Voidiani for it is said that the leader of the academy has an ancient religious dispute with them these rumors appear to be true as a splinter fleets of Voidiani extremists are appearing around the galaxy to come together and attack the academy if they succeed the place and its founder are likely to be destroyed and its secrets lost Protect the Academy by destroying the rogue Vodiani fleets. Um, hopefully the Cravers take care of that because they've got a lot of fleets over there in that area. Battle at Sable. Alright, these boys came up here for a fight. Got a Butcher, a Slicer, and a Marauder. This is going to be an interesting fight. Uh, we've got our dropship command ship, full strength, positron, half strength, pincer, three quarter strength, and corvette, three quarter strength. All right, so let's go with the barrage fire. I don't think we have any choice in that matter. They've got two ships with no long range and one ship with long range. All right, so we should... This is going to be a close fight. Um, there's no, there's no uh, guarantee of victory here, but we do have a commander here, so that could, that could help us out. All right. So here we go. Let's, let's check this battle. They're using Get Lucky. They split their fleet, so their butcher is going to be staying at long range, along with this. Slicer, so we're gonna destroy this ship first. The Marauder is gonna take all of our damage. Only has 128 defense, so we should take care of him pretty quickly. Battle at Sable. So they're trying to destroy our brand new colony. We can't allow that. Hopefully they haven't sent all of their fleets here, because they had those three fleets full of a million ships. That's no good. We got our shields raised. Yeah, we are blasting away at that marauder. Missiles on the way. Um, marauder's taking huge hits. like their butchers 
in range and firing back. We're not really wasting many shots on the butcher, but we are firing a few shots that way. Bouncing off their thick hull plating. Looks like they're firing some missiles our direction, but we've got some missile defense. We should be able to take down several of those missiles. Um, have we destroyed their marauder? Their marauder is destroyed. We've lost, what did we lose? We lost a pincer. So we're down to three ships to two. See how much of an, an advantage our leader gives us. I don't know. Oh, uh, the corvette is down to 56 hull. It's going to be destroyed very soon. There it goes. Now we're starting to lose a lot of ships in this war. Looks like they're focusing fire on our dropship now. He's down to 2300, but that's all right. Positron is there, the last remaining mercenary ship. The coolest mercenary ship, too. It's basically Butcher versus uh, Dropship at this point. I don't know that that's a fair fight. We're down to 1,100. Hull, oh, they're down to 900, so it's... it's. And we got a minor defeat out of that. We technically lost more ships, I guess. But we quitted ourselves pretty good. So we're done there. All right, so it was just that one fleet, but what is this? A Sofan detector. I don't know what he's doing there, but he can cut bait as far as I'm concerned. I was trying to think of some sort of semi-insult, but I didn't want to be rude or lewd. And we have our Guardian. We've also built a gunship and a chain gang. <laughs> we have used every single human soldier we could find and place them on those ships. Uh, we're making now making negative 23 dust per turn. That's fine. And negative 1 manpower per turn, which is less fine. But we've got a chain gang program in the works at Mira. And two more chain gang programs on the way. So that should, that should boost our military production back up again. We're just, you know, just drafting population after population that's probably where all of our population is going whenever we see those like you know imperials have left the system and we don't know where they went i think this is where they went into the military okay so now let's go over here to gemini uh let's bring that ship out let's select all let's merge these boys together Uh, whoa. Select all. Wait, all right. Bring the Guardian out of the hangar first. That's what we got to do. All right, there we go. Select all. Merge. And there we go. We now have a full seven-point fleet here. We have a commander with a, uh, what's his, what's this ship called? I forgot what his ship is called. The flagship. Yeah, we have a commander with a flagship. We have a guardian heavy cruiser, or medium cruiser. Anyway, we are ready for this fleet to do some damage. So we're going to send them across the void into Spisa and invade the enemy for a change. What's going on here? Where are okay, these guys are heading back to Cersini to regroup. Uh, we got a new ship here. We got a gunship. Bring him out of dock, I suppose. Send him yonder. Alright, let's move our fleets. Butcher is almost destroyed, and we just got a new ship here. We just got a defender. Not going to attack the Sofan, but we will take out the Leaper. Alright, so this Butcher is down to 900. 
Dropship. See, he repairs himself after every battle. That is so good. So he's back up to 1300. Positron 1200. And now the Defender is there. So he should take most of their shots. Uh, advanced. Fire here. We don't have enough uh, command points. So it's going to be. They're probably just going to either get lucky or turtle and come straight at us. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's win this battle. We've we've won more battles than we should have against the Cravers. I mean, they have the numbers of fleets. They've got you know the bigger ships, but we're getting lucky and we're we're using smart tactics. So here we are. Repairing ourselves again. Let's see. What are we up to? We're still up to 1,300. Um, 4,700 hull for this uh, defender. So that's that's huge. And that's uh, almost as much as their butcher has. You know, when it starts with. Right now, it doesn't have that much. So we're gonna we're gonna knock these boys out. There's no doubt about that. Feel safe. He's firing a lot of missiles, but the defender can knock some of those out of the air. He's got a turret, and there goes the butcher. Oh, that's quite a pleasing explosion to see. And now they just have one, one slicer who's got no sh guns to speak of. Not going to get in range. He might get in range of the defender and let off a couple of plasma bolts. Plasma beams, but I don't think so. He's taking a lot of fire right now. He's taking a lot of damage, and he's not dishing much out. Got no shields to defend against our lasers, and there he goes. He is roasted. Take that decisive... Victory. Start smoking dropship. Look at that. He actually gained health. He's up to 1800 health. So good. Good man. Uh, that's what's so good about having those repair modules. I mean, it just is the best. Um, looks like they still have one fleet there, an invader ship. Um, there's a logistic ship coming through, and then these Sophons, I don't care about you guys. I don't really want to start a war with the Sophons, so I'll let them pass. Um, other than that, we're okay. Alright. So let's end the turn. Oh, idle system at Sable. Oh, that's right, we got a new colony here at Sable. We colonized Sable 2, an incredibly interesting planet. So it's, first of all, it's very big. It's got a lot of population capacity for it. It's fertile. It's temperate. It has a dust nebula that gives us plus 50 dust on system and plus 2 dust per population. So we need people on this system for sure. All right. So let's add the colonial exchange. That will give us even more dust. Um... Let's go to level 2. That will give us even more dust. Maybe we'll go to level 2 first. Yeah. Uh, drone network. Interplanetary. Cerebral. Xeno industry. Zero, xeno tourism. All that stuff. Um, you know, we're going to do, do what we do. Big data shipyards. Pervious bunkers. Tractable. Honey, whoops, honeycomb. I don't need that gunship built there just yet. There we go, gunship. Uh, I think I'll move the honeycomb up since that's not going to take a lot of turns. There we go. Now, the only problem with this planet is that it doesn't have much in the way of production. Only three production. So this is more of a dust-producing colony. But we can, oops, 
we can colonize toxic now and this toxic planet has a lot of production not a lot of production but it has more production than any other planet it also has ooh oricolix ooh, I don't know what that is but it is uh, some kind of resource here Hmm, discovered as a byproduct of the nuclear fusion process within a star. The properties of this purple-hued metal make it excellent for anything that must endure extreme conditions. Hmm, interesting. So we'll see what that does once we have technology to do it. But we might want to colonize... I mean, this is a really good system. It's got th four colonizable planets. They all have a lot of science, some dust... Um, so if we can get this colony popping off, this will help us tremendously. Uh, but it's going to take us a few turns to do that. So that's that for that turn and that stuff and that everything else. Um, is there anything left to do on this turn? I don't think so. I don't think so. We got one idle ship down here. At Cersini. Uh, Corvette, we shall blockade that system. Well, not blockade, but defend that system. All right. End the turn. Let's move on. Oh, we got an election. Here we go. So, reinforced imperial support. So, this is a new election action we can do. Provides a very strong boost to the selected political party. Ideal if the chosen party is already well supported. Um, I mean, I think we're just going to give our official support to the militarists, right? I don't... Um, the militarists are already ahead. If we reinforce that support, there's every likelihood that they're going to win. They're already 47%. Uh, the pacifists are going to go with the industrialists, so that'll make that 35. The ecologists will probably go with the militarists, make that 49. Religious will also probably go with the militarists. Scientists will probably go, so it'll be 48%, I think, is the maximum that the industrialists are going to get so i think the militarists are going to win this win this election regardless of what i do so i don't want to spend my 1200 uh influence on that when i've got other things i could spend it on so we'll just go ahead with the election and let's see if my uh 48 to 52 percent uh prediction is true so the militarists come out to a huge lead 53 total representatives. They demolish everybody. And there we go. The militarist government has been established. Uh, Dmitry Lenko looks a little upset over here that he's going to be in the minority party, but he's still in the government. So as I predicted, the religious and the ecologist did go over for the militarist Whereas the, oh no, the scientists went to the, yeah, the scientists and the pacifists went to the industrialists. As I predicted. All right. So there we go. We have a new militarist regime in control. Let's wait for the turn to end and then check out, check out what laws and such we have in place. Now we could implement three militarist laws here and get, uh, get this moving forward. Our latest ongoing um, quest. Haha, <laughs> I remembered it's a quest. Alright, so the forced law enacted is the Jingoist Joy Bell. Joy Bill has been <laughs> activated. What does this do for us? A law. Any. Oh, there's my timer. So here we go. A law that any and every self-respecting lover of war, gun in hand, banner in the other, can get behind. Because the population are so invested in the military-industrial complex and all the shiny spectacles, parades, and okay, killing that comes with it. Not only do declarations of war have no 
influence cost, each active war actually boosts the happiness of the loons. Okay, so plus 15 happiness per war. Righty-o. Guess we'll start declaring war on everybody, so we'll finish that out. All right, so what do we have now? We have brains over bucks. Plus 20% science, minus 10% dust. I don't know that I like that. Jinguist Joy, lower fleet costs. We do need that. All right, so let's abolish brains over bucks. And let's add spoils of war. Plus 25 science per destroyed command point. Plus 25 dust gained per opponent ship command point destroyed all right I mean there are some other laws that I would probably rather implement like the larger host bill plus 20 percent uh, manpower capacity would be good so maybe we'll do the spoils of war just to just to finish off our quest that'll get us three laws so that, that should uh, work next time. So we just added two chain gang programs. So that boosted our manpower back up to 431. Uh, we got level 2 modernization on Sable and drone networks on Yissel. So that's all good stuff. Up next, tractable armaments. So we are militarizing our entire society at the moment. Our government is militarized. Our people are being militarized. Our colonies are being militarized. This this is what war does, people. This is what war does to you. All right. So we'll finish out this turn, and then that'll be the end of this episode. Laws canceled. Uh, improvement completion incentivization scheme. Oh, our dust windfall was canceled. That's too bad. That was very helpful. I love that dust windfall. That's what kept us in the green. Uh, in terms of dust, it kept us in the gold, I guess. But we're we're producing plus 80 right now. We got 3.9 thousand in the bank. I think that's all right. Let's move our ships around and see what happens. Not much. There's no great revelations there. Uh, how are we doing here? We got three ships there. We got two more on the way all right how's the uh how's the luxuries and such looking here uh, these ships have increased to four thousand even though the price says down uh luxury items you can see the prices dropped on these uh eden incense is down to 48 bucks Distiguous trees down to a hundred. That's fine. How are we with strategic resources? We could buy some Edmantian and some antimatter. I think we only need one antimatter to be able to build another one of those ships. Let's add one, one antimatter, and then we'll buy. I think we needed five Edmantian, or f yeah, five Edmantian to build that other kind of ship. It's one point nine thousand for five Edmantian. Hmm. Don't need that. I could almost buy another ship for that. All right. So anyway, um. We're going to end it there. We're going to buy some ships and do some stuff next turn. But that's for next turn. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.